I don't know where everyone at, is at, but we're having a meet today. I did post a ReadWorks. Just, it's about ice cream. I thought that'd be fun because Miss Kneipa loves ice cream. It's called Here's the Scoop, I think. That's not due till Thursday at the end of the day. So it's just posted anytime you have free time. It's not very long. It's about ice cream shop. You are to do that throughout the week. I just, we don't have a ton of ReadWorks grades and some of your guys' ReadWorks aren't the best. So you don't want those bad grades. Like I want to be able to average a little bit more. So whenever you have time for the ReadWorks, feel free to do it. It is due by Thursday at 2.35 p.m. But today we're going to start reading because we still have like half the book and like not a ton of time because we only have reading RTI today and Friday this week. And next week, I don't know when we're having it next week. I think Monday, Friday too. I'm not totally sure. But we are on chapter 23, The Badlands 242. So please go to that and we can do a little recap. Remember, Phoebe's mom has officially left. You know, she left three notes. She left all that food in the freezer saying what it was and how to cook. So, you know, Phoebe's like, oh my God, a lunatic took her. And her dad's like, Phoebe, why does she have all this frozen food for us to warm up if, you know, a lunatic took her? So, you know, a lunatic probably didn't take her. She chose to leave. Um, that was like the main parts of what we had read last. Um, remember, they drew their soul and Ben's and Sal's were coincidentally the same, which was super weird. But we are in 23 at the Badlands. The Badlands are a real place. Um, I'm trying to think whose state they're in. I don't know, but one of you, or maybe not, because I guess not everyone's on here. One of you might have written about the Badlands in your, for your project or read about them. So we are on page 242, the Badlands. Please follow along with me. Gramps said, how's your snake leg, goose fairy? Remember, her snake leg is probably the leg that the snake bit, right? Like, now it's, now it's a snake leg. Super silly. He was worried about Graham, but less about her leg than her raspy breathing. We'll stop in the Badlands, okay? Graham merely nodded. The closer we got to the Badlands, the more the... Yes, the Badlands are in South Dakota. Go Jameson. The closer we get to the Badlands, the more wicked were the whispers in the air. Slow down, slow, slow, slow. Maybe we shouldn't go to the Badlands, I suggested. What? Not go? Of course we should go, Graham said. We're almost there. It's a national treasure. My mother must have traveled on this road. What was she thinking about when she saw that sign, or that one, when she reached this spot in the road? Landon, you are distracting me. So I'm going to need you to stay with us. We are on page 142, land, this Landon. And um, I'm pretty sure Miss Rampala has been to the Badlands. And I think Mrs. Miller has too in sixth grade. So if you ever see them, I'm pretty sure they've been. My mother did not drive. She was terrified of cars. I don't like all that speed, she said. I like to be in control of where I'm going and how fast I'm going. When she said she was going all the way to Lewiston, Idaho on a bus, my father and I were astonished. I could not imagine why she had chosen Idaho. I thought perhaps she had opened an atlas and pointed, at a pointed a finger at any old spot, but later I learned that she had a cousin in Lewiston, Idaho. I haven't seen her for 15 years, my mother said, and that's good because she'll tell me what I'm really like. I could tell you that, sugar, my father said. No, I mean, before I was a wife and a mother. I mean, underneath where I am, Chan Hassan. After driving for, a, for so long through flat South Dakota prairie, it was a shock to come upon the Badlands. It was as if someone had ironed out all the rest of South Dakota and smoothed all the hills and valleys and rocks into that spot. Right smack in the middle of flat panes were jagged peaks and steep gorges above was the high blue sky and below were pink and purple and black rocks. You can stand right on the edge of the gorges and see down, down into the most treacherous ravines lined with sharp, rough outcroppings. You expect to see human skeletons dangling here and, there, dangling here and there. Grandma tried to say, huzzah, huzzah, but she could not breathe well. Huzz, huzz, she rasped. Gramps placed a blanket on the ground so that she could sit and look. My mother sent me two postcards from the Badlands. One of them said, Salamonica is my left arm. I miss my left arm. 
I told Graham and Gramps a story that my mother had told me about the high sky, which looked higher here than anywhere else I had been. Long ago, the sky was so low that you might bump your head on it if you were not careful, and so low that people sometimes disappeared right into it. People got a little fed up with this, so they made long poles, and one day they raised their poles and pushed. They pushed the sky as high as they could. Obviously, that's like an old folks' tale. The sky was never so low, and people didn't use poles to push it up. So she's saying like an old, like, folks' wise tale. And looky there, Gramp said. They pushed so good, the sky stayed put. While I was telling the story, a pregnant woman stood nearby, dabbing her face with a tissue. That woman looks like a world worry. Gramp said, he asked if she would like to rest on our blanket. I'll go look around, I said. Pregnant women frighten me. When my mother first told me she was pregnant, she added, at last, we are really going to fill this house with children. At first, I didn't like the idea. What was wrong with having just me? My mother, father, and I were our own little unit. As the baby grew inside her, my mother let me listen to its heartbeat and feel its kicking against her, and I started looking forward to seeing this baby. I hoped it would be a girl, and I would have a sister. Together, my father, my mother, and I decorated the nursery. We painted it sparkling white and hung yellow curtains. My father stripped an old dresser and repainted it. People gave us the tiniest baby clothes. We washed and folded each shirt, each jumpsuit, each sleeper. We bought fresh new cloth diapers because my mother liked to see diapers hanging on the line outside. The one thing we could not do was settle on a name. Nothing seemed quite right. Nothing was perfect enough for this baby. My father seemed more worried about this than my mother. Something will come to us, my mother said. The perfect name will arrive in the air one day. Three weeks before the baby was due, I was out in the woods beyond the farthest field. My father was in town on errands, and my mother was scrubbing the floors. She said that scrubbing the floors made her back feel better. My father didn't like her to do this, but she insisted. My mother was not a fragile, sickly woman, so it was, it was normal for her to do this sort of thing. In the woods, I climbed an oak, singing my mother's song. Oh, don't fall in love with the sailor boy, a sailor boy, a sailor boy. I climbed higher and higher. Don't fall in love with the sailor boy. Then the branch I stepped on snapped. I grabbed on at another, but it was dead and came away in my hands. I fell down, down. As if I were in slow motion, I saw leaves. I knew I was falling. When I came to, I was on the ground and my face pressed in the dirt. My right leg was twisted beneath me and when I tried to move, it felt as if sharp needles were shooting all the way up my leg. I tried to drag myself across the ground, but the needles shot up to my brain and made everything black. There was a whooping buzzing in my head. So can someone type in the chat what probably happened? Well, obviously she fell, but what injury did she get when she fell? Concussion. She might have gotten a concussion. We don't know that for sure, but there is one we know for sure. Type it in my chat. Oh, Paisley said, yeah, she broke her leg. She said it's twisted underneath her, and when she feels like she's moving, there's, like, pins. And the pain is probably so bad, that's what's making her, like, go in and out of consciousness. So she broke her leg falling from the tree. I must have passed out again because the next time I opened my eyes, the woods were darker and the air was cooler. I heard my mother calling. Her voice was distant and faint, coming, I thought, from near the barn. I answered, but my voice was caught in my chest. My, my mother found me and carried me back through the woods, across the fields, and down the long hill to the house. She called my grandparents to come take us to the hospital. It took forever just to get a cast, and by the time we got home, we were all exhausted. My father felt awful that he had been away and fussed over both of us constantly. The baby came that night. I heard my father telephone the doctor. She won't make it, he said. It's happening now, right now. On my new crutches, I toddled down the hall. My mother was sunk into the pillow, sweating and groaning. Something's wrong, she said to my father. She saw me standing there and said, you shouldn't watch. I don't think I'm very good at this. 
in the hallway uh, in the hallway outside her room i lowered myself to the floor my doctor came my mother screamed just once long mournful wail and then it was quiet when the doctor carried the baby out of the room i asked to see it it had a pale bluish tinge and there were marks on its neck where the umbilical cord had strangled it it must have been dead for hours the doctor told my father i just can't say exactly all right so earlier in the story we heard about how her mother was pregnant but we never heard you know where's the baby the baby passed away sometimes that happened like that's the real life thing that can happen and the umbilical cord can get wrapped around the baby's neck sometimes it can even get wrapped around limbs and like a limb might die and they may not be able to grow their right limbs but in this case the baby was strangled by its own umbilical cord so the baby passed away which is very sad which is why we never heard where was the baby it's because the baby passed away was it a boy or girl i asked the doctor whispered his answer a girl i asked if i could touch her she was still a little warm from being inside my mother she looked so sweet and peaceful all curled up and i wanted to hold her but the doctor said that was not a good idea i thought maybe if i held her she would wake up my father looked shaken but he didn't seem concerned about the baby anymore he kept going in and touching my mother he said to me it wasn't your fault sal it wasn't because she carried you you mustn't think that i didn't believe him I hobbled into my mother's room and called on the bed beside her. She was staring at the ceiling. Let me hold it, she said. Hold what? The baby, she said. Her voice was odd and silly. My father came in and she asked him for the baby. He leaned down and said, I wish, I wish. The baby, she said. It didn't make it, he said. I'll hold the baby, she said. It didn't make it, he repeated. It can't be dead, she said in the same sing-song voice. It was alive just a minute ago. I slept beside her until I heard her calling my father. When he turned on the light, I saw the blood spread across the bed. It had soaked the sheets and the blankets. It had soaked into the white plaster on my cast. An ambulance came and took her and my father away. Graham and Gramps came to stay with me. Graham took all the sheets and boiled them. She scrubbed the blood from my cast as best as she could, but the dark pink stain remained. My father came home from the hospital briefly the next day. What should we name the baby? We should name the baby anyways, he said. Do you have any suggestions? The name came to me from the air. Tulip, I said. My father smiled. Your mother will like that. Okay, um... Landon said, what's going on? So sometimes, this is a real life thing, when um, you have a baby, sometimes it can cause, like, it's called, like, hemorrhaging, and it's, like, excessive bleeding. So she had the baby at home, so she wasn't already in a hospital. And then, you know, the baby passed away. They all went to sleep, but then she woke up. It was called, it's called hemorrhaging. It's, like, excessive bleeding. So then she had to go to the hospital. Because if you lose too much blood, you can die, because you only have so much blood in your body. So she had to go to the hospital. The baby's passed away. Paisley. What does excessive mean? Excessive bleeding. Excessive means a lot. Just so like a hemorrhaging just means like a lot of bleeding. And if you lose too much blood, you could die. So she just had to go to the hospital. That can actually, that, that's a real thing that happens sometimes. Um, so she's at the hospital. Dad came home for just a minute and he said, okay, well, let's name the baby. You know, it still was born, even though, you know, it didn't live. We should name it. So she said Tulip. My father smiled. Your mother will like that. We'll bury the baby in a little cemetery near the Aspen Grove where the tulips come up every spring. My mother had two operations in the next days. She won't stop bleeding. Later, my mother said they took out all my equipment. She would not have any more babies. So, um, you know, just female anatomy lesson. So obviously women are the people that can get pregnant, not men. And, um, so from this pregnancy, it was super traumatic. So it ruined um, where she was able to grow a baby. So they had to remove it. It's like an organ, just like, you know, you can get a kidney removed and stuff. So they had to remove this organ. So now she won't ever be able to have a baby again. So remember, she, the past few chapters, all she's been talking about is, you know, she wants to fill the house with babies, fill the house with babies, you know, all these children she wants. And now she's not going to be able to have any more children at all. Like, it's not possible. So that's obviously very sad adoption yeah you could adopt i don't i mean 
that's obviously a possibility. I sat on the edge of the gorge in the Badlands, looking back at Graham and Gramps and the pregnant woman on the blanket. I pretended that it was my mother sitting there and she would still have the baby and everything would be the way it was supposed to be. And then I tried to imagine my mother sitting here on her trip out in Lewiston, Idaho. Did all the people on the bus get out and walk around with her or did she sit by herself like I was doing? Did she sit here in this spot? Did she see the pink, the pink sphere? Was she thinking about me? I picked up a flat stone and sailed it across the gorge where it hit the far wall and plummeted down, down, careening off the jagged outcroppings. My mother once told me that Blackfoot story of Nepi, the old man who created men and women to decide if these new people should live or die. Nepan selected a stone. If the stone floated, he said, you'll live forever. If it sinks, you will die. Nepin dropped the stone into the water. It sank. People die. Why did Nepi use a stone, I asked. Why not a leaf? My mother suggested, if I had been there, she could have made the rock float, she said. She was referring to my habit of skipping stones across the water. I picked up another rock and sailed it across the gorge, and this one, too, hit the opposite wall and fell down, down, down. It was not a river. It was a hole. What did I expect? All right, so obviously that chapter is really sad, and that brings a lot of light or a lot of insight into the story. Like, maybe one of the reasons her mother wanted to get away was because she lost her baby, right? That's super, that's a traumatic thing that can happen. So maybe that's why she wanted to leave. Um, so now we know what happened. Hold on, people. Now she know. Now we know what happened because we heard her mother was pregnant. They're in the Badlands, which is supposed to be super beautiful. Um, so that was a long chapter, also a sad chapter. Paisley, what do you have to say, ma'am? I accidentally pressed that button. Evan, do you have a question? I was. I was thinking it's kind of a suicide. Yep. Like the mom, she was so sad. Yeah, she's probably really sad. Probably like maybe going through a depression. Maybe that's one reason she wanted to leave. We don't know. The hundred percent sure. But anyway, also in that chapter, we can see that Graham is getting kind of sicker. Like she's not even like talking well or breathing well. And like, is it just because she's old? Is it because the trip's hot on her? Or is it, or is it because like the snake bite like took so much out of her? So we also need to keep an eye on Graham's, which makes me nervous. All right, we do have time to read 24. Okay, sorry, Landon. That's called a hemophiliac, Paisley. If you have a bleeding disorder where you can't clot, that's called a hemophiliac. Just sometimes pregnant women, it literally happens from pregnancy. You can just, that like excessive bleeding is called hemorrhaging. There's like a full name to it, but hemorrhaging is when you have too much blood and it just can happen to pregnant women. And we're gonna assume that this is set a little bit further back. I mean, obviously this book doesn't take place in 2021, um, but it doesn't take, pla take place in the 1950s either. So obviously they had hospitals, they had ambulances and stuff, but you know, sometimes medical things can be done to save, you know, organs and stuff. And sometimes they can't, it all just depends on the person. Um, Julian might be done with his, he's had it plugged in for a while. As we were leaving the Badlands, Gramps swore at a driver who cut us off. Usually when Gramps cursed like this, Gramps threatened to go back to the Eggman I don't know the whole story, just that one time when Gramps was cursing up a storm, Gran ran off with a man who regularly brought them eggs from Gramps. Gramps stayed with the Eggman for three days and three nights until... <coughs> sorry, hold on. <coughs> oh, goodness. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, What's the thing of a mess? Um... For three, though, Graham stayed with the Eggman for three days and three nights until Gramps came to get her and promised he wouldn't swear anymore. So apparently, Gramps swore, you know, like cuss, said a bad word, and Gramps was like, I'm leaving, going with the Eggman, and didn't come back for three days. Like, okay, that's silly. I once asked Graham if she would really go back to the Eggman if Gramps cussed too much. She said, don't tell your grandfather, but I don't mind a few bad word and bad words. Mrs. Sniper doesn't feel like saying that. My own personal choice. Besides, that Eggman snored to beat the band. So you didn't leave Gramps just because of the cursing? Salamonica. 
I don't even remember why I did that. Sometimes, you know, in your heart, you love someone, but you have to go away before your head can figure it out. That night, we stayed at a motel outside of the wall of South Dakota. They had one room left with only one bed in it, but Gramps was tired, so he said it would do. The bed was a king-size water bed. God dang, Gramps said, looky here. When he pressed his hand on it, it gurgled. Looks like we'll all have to float on a raft together tonight. Graham flopped down on the bed and giggled. Huzz, huzz, she said. In her raspy voice, she rolled in the middle. Huzz, huzz. I lay down next to her and Graham tentatively sat down on the other side. Whoa, he said. I do believe this is a lot. This thing's alive. You guys are young, so you guys have may never felt a waterbed. Waterbeds were super popular like in the 90s. Um, I remember my aunt had one. I don't know how anyone would want to sleep on them, but they were a really popular thing. They definitely are not as popular. I don't, I personally don't know anyone that has a waterbed anymore, but back in the day, waterbeds were where it was at. <clears throat> but obviously it moves. Like, could you imagine? It's like a giant water balloon and like, eh, it just moves a lot. So Gramps is saying that it's like alive because it's moving. The three of us lay there sloshing around as Gramps turned this way and that. God oh, darn, he said. Tears were streaming down Gramps' face. She was giggling so hard. Gramps said, well, this ain't our marriage bed. That night, I dreamed I was floating down a river on a raft with my mother. We were lying on our backs looking up at the high sky. The sky moved closer and closer to us. There was a sudden... 154 flopping sound then we were up in the sky mama looked all around and said we can't be dead we were just alive a minute ago in the morning we sat on the black hills and mount rushmore hoping to be there by lunchtime no sooner were we in the car than gramps said so what happened to pb pb's mother and did pb get any more of those messages number her name's pb not pb I hope everything turned out all right, Graham said. I'm a little worried about Phoebe. On the day after Phoebe showed her father the suspicious spots and the unidentified hair strands, another message appeared. You can't keep the birds of sadness from flying over your head, but you can keep them from nesting in your hair. I like that message. I think that, um, so you can't keep the birds of sadness from flying, meaning when sadness comes to you, you have to be sad. Like you don't really have a choice sometimes, but you can keep it from nesting in your hair. Meaning maybe you can keep it from, you know, um, taking over your life. That's that's probably one of my favorite quotes from the, the lunatic or whoever's dropping these off. Phoebe brought the message to school to show me the lunatic again, she said. If he has already kidnapped your mother, why would he still be leaving you messages? They're clues, she said. At school, people kept asking Phoebe about her mother's business trip to London. She tried to ignore them, but it wasn't always possible. She had to answer them some of the time. When Megan asked Phoebe what sights her mother had seen, Phoebe said, Birmingham Palace. Of course, Megan nodded knowingly, and Big Ben, and Phoebe was struggling. Shakespeare's birthplace? But that's in Stanford. Stan Stanford, uh... On a Avon, sorry, Stafford on Avon, Megan said. I thought your mother was in London. Stafford is miles away. Did she go on a day trip or something? Yes, that's what she did. She went on a day trip. Phoebe couldn't help it. She looked as if her, a whole family of birds of sadness were nesting in her hair. In English class, Ben was giving, Ben had to give his mythology report. He was nervous. He explained that Prometheus stole fire from the sun and gave it to, and gave it to man, Zeus. The chief god was angry at him and Prometheus, angry at man and Prometheus for taking some of his precious son. As punishment, Zeus sent Pandora, a woman, to man. <coughs> then Zeus. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Then Zeus chained Prometheus to a rock and sent vultures down to eat Prometheus's liver. Gross. In Ben's nervousness, he mispronounced Prometheus, so what he actually said was Zeus sent vultures down to eat porpoises' livers. Uh -huh. Sometimes when you're nervous, you make mistakes. <laughs> Mary Lou invited both me and Phoebe to dinner that night. When I phoned my father, he did not seem to mind. I knew he wouldn't. All he said was, that would be nice for you, Sal. Maybe I'll go over, maybe I'll go eat over at Margaret's. All right, we are going to stop there for today. We don't have time to um, go to the next chapter. So you still have five minutes left in reading. Does anyone have any questions about anything we read?
Um, obviously, Phoebe, Phoebe's mother's still gone. The lunatic or whoever still leaving her messages. That was like the third or fourth message, I think. I think that might have been the third. Um, and obviously, we learned a lot about Sal's family, how the baby was left. Grams is getting sick. Well, seems to be getting sick. So all that crazy stuff. But remember, you do have a ReadWorks that is due on Thursday. So be sure to get it done by Thursday at 2.35 p.m. You guys may leave me. Thank you for joining. I will see you all later. This will be posted, of course. You know what? I wonder if so my um, aunt died because my papa died. And she was so sad that her body kind of stopped um, breathing, I guess. So they had to have a field thing on it. I wonder if that's what happened to the mom. I don't know. I don't know what I know. It doesn't really go into too much detail. Bye-bye. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, um, when are they giving out the posters? Because my dad's coming by to get my stuff. And I told him that I need my um, poster. So, yeah. Do you have to be at home for a while? Um... Maybe. I don't know if you can tell about my voice. I have a sore throat and my dad said not to go to school because it's like a symptom of COVID or something. Okay, well, um, email Mrs. Siddig about your poster, okay? Because she has all the extras. So email Mrs. Siddig about that and hopefully she'll get back to you soon, okay? Okay. Bye. All right, bye.